You're watching BBC News with Maxime Mawini and Simon McCoy. Now, the Russian government has called the US missile strike in Syria an aggressive act which violates international law. The news comes as foreign ministers from the G7 group of leading economic nations are meeting in Italy over the next two days. You're watching BBC News with Maxime Mawini and Simon McCoy. Not going to be able to say that for much longer. <laughs> anyway, let's get a weather forecast. Chris Fawkes can bring us up to date. Simon, Maxime, thanks a lot. Thank you, Brian. Just now to go. Maxime Winnie will be departing these shores, or at least this studio anyway, uh, at five o'clock. Five o'clock. So do... So glad to be spending my last shift with you, Simon. There are others enduring this. Matt Taylor is one of them. He okay. has the weather. It certainly am. Thank you very much, Simon. Very good afternoon to you. This is BBC News, I'm Maxine Mulwiney. The headlines at four. The funeral of PC Keith Palmer, who was murdered in last month's Westminster attack, has taken place at Southwark Cathedral. His family was joined by thousands of police officers who lined the funeral procession's route through central London. The Foreign Secretary says Russia faces fresh international sanctions over its support of Syria's President Assad, as foreign ministers from the G7 nations meet in Italy. This is your choice. Stick with that guy, stick with that tyrant, or work with us to find a better solution. The police in Manchester say the number of people abusing the drug Spice has reached epidemic proportions. Also this hour, the Great Barrier Reef is at a terminal stage. Scientists say unprecedented coral, ble coral bleaching has damaged two-thirds of Australia's famous reef. And Sergio Garcia wins his first major title on his 74th time of asking with victory over England's Justin Rose in a sudden death playoff at the Masters. Good afternoon and welcome to BBC News. A funeral service has been taking place for PC Keith Palmer, who was stabbed to death outside the Houses of Parliament during last month's attack in Westminster. Okay. Now, uh, to the balcony, we're going to the balcony. Just to let you know, half an hour before Maxima Winnie leaves the building for the last time. So, if you want to send her a quick Twitter message, we might be able to read those out. But in the meantime, let's get a weather update. Matt Taylor. Matt Taylor's on the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. It's raining in my heart, Maxine, for this last half hour. But at least I'm bringing a little bit of sunshine for your last shift. It is fine out there across many parts of the country. Good afternoon. This is BBC News with Maxi Mawini and Simon McCoy. The headlines were the time at half past four. The funeral of PC Keith Palmer, who was murdered in last month's Westminster attack, has taken place in Southwark Cathedral. Thousands of police officers have been lining the route of the funeral procession through central London. The Foreign Secretary, Boris Johnson, says he will be discussing the possibility of further sanctions on Russia and Syria, as last week's suspected chemical attack looks set to dominate the G7 meeting in Italy. And concerns over an increase in antisocial behaviour fuelled by the former legal high Spice has prompted a police crackdown in Manchester. Should be me doing this, but I think you should do it. It's the last oh, time. Oh, OK, then. Let's go to the BBC Sports Centre. <gasps> and Ollie Foster. Hello, Ollie. Maxine, I'm welling up here. Several videos have been posted online of a man being violently dragged off a United Airlines plane after the flight was overbooked. The videos posted on social media show a man being pulled out of his seat and down the aisle of the plane, which was waiting to take off at Chicago O'Hare Airport by three security officers. That's a bit noisy there. United Airlines issued a statement apologising for overbooking the flight. We won't have that trouble getting you out, will we? <laughs> You're watching... <laughs> right. It's going well. You're watching BBC News. Now, Australia's Great Barrier Reef is in danger of being destroyed. You all right? Your turn. OK. Yeah. In a moment, we're going to have a look at the financial markets. That's it. Back to you, Simon. Thank you, Jamie. Yep, this is it. Moment we've all dreaded. 
Uh, Maxine, we're saying farewell to her after 21 years here at the BBC. She has been at the heart of this channel for many of those. Now, before she goes, let's just have a look at some of her BBC highlights. Bill Clinton says he'll concentrate on domestic issues, but he also inherits the problems of the former Yugoslavia, of Iraq and Somalia. This is really a record-breaking year in British politics. There are 3,717 candidates. That's more than ever before. And the princess is in intensive care. Her reported injuries are concussion, a broken arm, and serious cuts to her thigh. There are, however, reports that her condition is grave. No special ceremonies. There really isn't much being said about this at all on the streets, people going about their normal business. It's another phase in what's being described as the normalisation of Northern Ireland. Hello, good afternoon. The Conservatives say they plan to end inheritance tax on family homes worth up to a million pounds if they win the election. Welcome to Dateline. This week, how does the world react to the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner? Oh, hang on a second. I think we're hearing some news here. It's a girl. Oh, my the Duchess goodness. Of Cambridge has safely delivered a daughter, we're hearing, at 8.34 a.m. this morning. That's coming from Kensington Palace. This is coming from uh, the PA News Agency, which has been told by the palace, it's a girl. Reading from an autocue whilst remaining relaxed and confident requires practice and a few basic techniques. You want to look and sound natural, avoid potential pitfalls and all the while engaging the audience. Here we go then, Max. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to my world. What you've just seen is how my hour begins every time I go into the news studio. What you didn't hear was what else is going on in my ear. Because as well as the counting down to the program going on air, what we also have is the editorial team saying, oh, we've lost that re video report. Could you fill a bit of time? And this is all going on while they're going, five, four, three, two, one, cue. And you've got to look fabulous. The jobs will go at Tata's operation in Scunthorpe and in Scotland. Now, the company is not commenting on the news at the moment, but a source has told the BBC that the cuts in Scotland could see the end of the operations formerly owned by British Steel. Now, oh, it's all gone dark. <laughs> I haven't got the money for the meter. <laughs> you don't need one for a broomstick. Now, uh, let's Ooh. get the weather. Of I made the fatal error of asking you all to tweet your uh, responses and, <laughs> and messages. Way too many to read out. Uh, I'm going to read one. This is from someone you know, Donna Trainer from Newsline in Northern Ireland. She says, an anchor who is distinctive, knowledgeable, unflappable, and always at ease in the hot seat. And again, Roger Mosey, former boss of ours, dependable, authoritative, warm. And what, what you see is what she is, and it's been a great privilege. No. But, the trouble is, as ever, she has to get the last word. <laughs> yeah, I do indeed, because I didn't want to leave without saying something. This has been the most incredible journey after 21 years. The autocue actually needs to go up a little bit for us. <laughs> Thank you. I did write it because I didn't think I'd be able to say it without that. Um, it's been fantastic. From my first broadcasting job 40 years ago as a young journalist in Belfast during the Troubles and then living and working around the world as a foreign correspondent. I've interviewed presidents, prime ministers, pop stars, movie stars, sports stars, and covered many of the major stories in the last four decades. I single-handedly, as you saw there, presented BBC News during the night of the death of Princess Diana. I've covered the Clinton presidency, the Oklahoma bomb, the trial of O.J. Simpson, and the Gulf War, to name a few. So I've seen political change, social change, and all the highs and lows along the way. And it's been an absolute privilege to bring you the news. And many of you have been asking where I'm going next. Well, 
I've decided to return to the freelance world a factual lifestyle and social affairs programs documentaries a bit of feature writing hosting and keynote speaking so I want to thank all of my colleagues here at BBC News now they are the people you don't see because they're here behind me um, and they are and you I suppose as well <laughs> and they are an amazing team it's uh, an astonishing place to work and I'll miss every one of them Thank you for watching over the years, and I know that the BBC News Channel will only go from strength to strength, so it's goodbye from me. You got through it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's thank been a huge you. privilege to work with you. Thank you very much. And we will miss you, you dreadfully. So, before I go, um, <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually gone. <laughs> the level is ready. Let's get the weather. Matt. Get us out of this. <laughs> Thank you very much, Simon. Well, no. the forecast no. tears have arrived on Cuba. We'll certainly miss you, Maxine, leaving a lot of warmth in our hearts. Uh, and weather-wise, well, leave you with a bit of sunshine too. And